Hey guys, welcome. Today we're gonna be making cyanotypes and when we finish you're gonna hopefully be ending with something like this. Cyanotype is one of the easiest and also safest printing photographic processes using ultraviolet light. It was actually invented a long time ago in uh, 1842 and it's mostly known for its rich blue color it produces. Enough of talking, let's jump into the video. Okay, before we start, let's go through the things you will need. First is a distilled water, then potassium ferrous cyanide, ferric ammonium citrate, a scale, a beaker or any other type of container will do, rod or a stick for mixing, and some bottles to store solution A and solution B. Start preparing solution A by measuring the amount of distilled water. For this purpose I'm using a syringe. My storage bottles are 150 milliliters, that's why I'm using 100 milliliters of water. If you have already pre-bought the solutions, you can feel free to skip this part. Proceed by weighing 36 grams of ferric ammonium citrate. Now we are ready to mix things up. There is quite a lot of mixing to be done in order to dissolve the whole amount of ferric ammonium citrate. When you are done mixing you can pour the solution A into the storage bottle. I recommend you to use the brown glass in order to prevent bacteria growth. Next up is solution B. You can start again by measuring the distilled water. And weighing 20 grams of potassium ferricyanide. I'm always amazed by how the chemicals slowly start to dissolve into the solution. At this point I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel and join the community. Thanks. I usually label both bottles in order to know when the solution was mixed and which one is which. For mixing and coating you will need both solutions, something to mix solutions in a brush of some sort and something to measure up the solutions. Mixture is done in one to one ratio. First measure and pour solution A into the mixing jar or a beaker. I am using 10 milliliters. Do the same with solution B. How much solution you will need to coat the paper highly depends on the type of paper and how many layers you're gonna coat it with. Now that both A and B solutions are mixed, the mixture is sensitive to UV light. Now it's time for coating. Prepare yourself cyanotype solution, brushes, paper and a flat surface. Sometimes I use a masking tape, it secures the paper and makes the coating easier. Try to spread the solution evenly. If you want you can also coat the paper all the way to the edges. There you go, papers are coated. 
Now you need to leave them drying over the night or just use a hair dryer to speed up the process. While papers are drying, you can just pick up some printing materials. Papers have dried so we can start placing the materials we picked on the paper. For printing I'm using two thick pieces of glass. Now that I have placed the leaves in the position, I cover and press them with another piece of glass. Cyanotypes are sensitive to UV light, so the easiest way to expose them is on the bright sun. Exposure can vary from the position of the sun and the time of the year, but usually it's between 20 to 25 minutes. Paper turned grey on the places where it was exposed. Now we can take off the materials we printed with and uh, develop the paper. Water is all you need to develop the cyanotypes. Just make sure it's not too hot or you will damage the paper. Silver areas are actually oxidized metal which will be removed during this process. You can see that the unexposed areas are still kind of purple, but when the paper dries out they are gonna turn white completely. I dry the cyanotypes by hanging them by the edges. This way all the excess water can drip off from the bottom edge. Finally cyanotype has dried and uh, this is the final result. To end up this video I would like to say that there is many variations to this process. The one I selected works the best for me and it's, I think it's also the easiest for you to do. In the future I am for sure going to be making more videos on alternative photographic techniques so if you haven't yet make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you have any questions or comments about cyanotype process or any other, uh, feel free to leave the comment in the comment section below. And until next time, enjoy! Oh yeah, I almost forgot about my Patreons. I would really like to thank them for their support and I also invite you to join my community.